The offset function is the magic ingredient for writing formulas that automatically adjust as your data grows or summarize data based on criteria you set on the fly. However, offset can be a little daunting to learn because unlike most Excel functions which return a value, the offset function returns a reference to a cell or range of cells. And as a result, you typically don't use offset on its own. It sounds complicated, but it's one of those functions that once you learn it, you realize it's actually very straightforward. I liken it to a treasure map where you have a starting point and then coordinates that direct you to your treasure. Let's take a look at some examples. And at the end, I'll show you the two most common mistakes people make when writing offset, which I get emails about all the time. Before we dive in, let's just take a quick look at the syntax. The first argument is the reference. That's the starting cell or reference to a range. Next, we have the rows, which is the number of rows to move up or down from that reference cell. Then we have the number of columns to move left or right from the reference cell. And then we have optional height and width arguments. Height is the number of rows that you want the reference to be, and width is the number of columns you want the reference to be. Now, if the height or width are omitted, offset will return a range the same size as the reference. And we'll see this in the examples I'm going to show you. All right, let's take a look at the first example. Here I want to return the range in blue, and my reference cell is the cell in green. So if I write offset, my reference is this cell. The next argument is the number of rows I want to move down from the reference. Well, I need to move down one row. Next is the number of columns to move across from the reference. I want to move two columns across. And then we have the height and width. Well, the range I want returned is three rows high and two columns wide. And that's it. Now I have Excel 365. So when I press enter, offset is going to spill the results. If you have Excel 2019 or earlier, you're going to get an error here because Excel doesn't know what to do with that range being returned. So you can wrap it in a function that takes a range. For example, I can count these results. Actually, I need count A because I'm counting text. And then you see I get six returned. And we can see what's happening under the hood if we evaluate the formula. So on the formulas tab, evaluate formula. And then as I press evaluate, you're going to see the result of offset returned, which is the cell references. Now in this example, offset isn't dynamic because I've hard keyed the arguments, but we'll look at some ways to write it so it's dynamic in a moment. So here my reference is three cells high, but I only want one cell returned by offset. So let's write it. We're going to select these cells. I don't need to move down any rows from my starting point, but I need to move across two columns. My height, I just want one cell returned and the width is the same as the reference that is one column wide so I can either omit that or put it in it's up to you and you can see it returns the value in the cell now if you have Excel 2019 or earlier offsets going to evaluate in this instance because there's only one cell being returned in the range in this example the reference and the range that I want returned are the same size and that means I can omit the last two arguments. So we're referencing this. I need to move down four rows. I don't need to move across any columns. It's in the same column. And I don't need height and width arguments because the height and width are the same as my reference. So I can simply close the formula there and I get the results. Again, if you've got Excel 2019 or earlier, you're going to get an error there. All right, one more example. I want to show you how you can move to the left and above. The reference cell. Here my reference is below the cell that I want returned so I need to move up two rows so that's minus two rows and I need to move two columns to the left so that's minus two. The height and width is the same as my reference that is one cell so I don't need those arguments and there we get the result returned. Again this is a single cell being returned so it's going to evaluate in all versions of Excel. Now hopefully you have an idea of the different ways you can populate the offset arguments. Let's look at some practical uses for it and how you can make it dynamic. A common problem is having to manually edit some formulas when you insert a new row of data just above where you have your sum formula. So if we F2, you can see the sum hasn't updated to include this new cell. 
Let me control Z to undo that. And let's look at how we can use offset to make this dynamic. So instead of sum C61 to C64, I'm going to use offset to return the second cell reference. So here we want offset. What are we offsetting? Well, we want to always pick up the cell above the current cell we're on. So I'm going to reference the current cell and that is C65. And I want to move up one row, so minus one. I don't need to move any columns, so we're going to omit that. And the height and width is just one cell, so I don't need those arguments because they're the same size as my reference. So that's offset, close sum, press enter. You can see I get the same result. Let's copy it across. And now when I insert a new row and add in a new value, let's just make it 100, you can see it's automatically included in my formula. Now I should point out that in newer versions of Excel, you may find some formulas automatically update to include new rows, but not always as you've seen here. So this is an ideal alternative if you're having this issue in any of your files. Offset is probably best known for its use in returning dynamic ranges. For example, I want to be able to choose the program from this list here and have my formula return the correct result based on that selection. Now I want to sum the viewer numbers. That's what this data is here. But I need offset to help me find the range that I want to sum. So we're using offset, the reference point. We're going to start here. And then I need to find what row Mr. Maker is on. So I can use match to do that. So we're looking up Mr. Maker in this range here, and I want an exact match. So match is going to return four. That's going to move me down one, two, three, four rows from my reference point. Then I need to tell it how many columns I need to move across. Well, I need to move across one to the first column of values, the height, I just want one row returned and the width, well, there's four columns of values. Close parentheses on offset, close sum, press enter, and there's our result. And if I choose a different program, you can see the formula is updating automatically based on my selection. And if you want to see under the hood, we can evaluate offset. You can see it's looking for Spider-Man. It's telling me Spider-Man's on the sixth row. And that gives me the cell range C80 to F80, which is that row there. Okay, let's take a look at dynamic named ranges next. Another common way to use offset is to create dynamic named ranges. For example, here I've got a table of data that I've charted. As I add years to the table, I want the chart to automatically pick up that new data. And at the moment it won't because the chart is referencing these cell ranges and they're hard keyed. I'm just going to move the chart down here to allow me some room. I like to write my offset formulas in a cell and then copy them to the name manager. It just makes it easier and quicker to write. So we'll write one first of all for the axis labels. So my starting point is going to be the first cell in my data range. I don't need to move down any rows or across any columns, so we're going to leave those blank. The height is going to depend on how many values I've got in my range, and remember, I want to allow for growth. So I'm going to use count. I'm counting numbers, so count's fine, but if you're counting text, then obviously you're going to use count A. I need to select my range, and then I need to allow for growth. So let's just go down a few more rows. We'll go to 102. That's going to give me the height. And then the width, well, my axis labels are in two columns, so I want it two columns wide. Close parentheses. Now, because I have Excel 365, it's going to spill the results and I can see that they're correct. If you have an earlier version of Excel, then you'll get an error here. Now, before I copy it to the name manager, I need to absolute reference those cells. Now I'm happy with my formula. I'm just going to highlight it, Control C to copy. And then on the formulas tab, I want to define a name. We'll call this chart axis. And in here, I'm just going to paste in my formula. I'll click OK. Now for earlier versions of Excel, you can open the name manager and click in the refers to for the chart axis. You get the marching ants so you can see that your range is being returned correctly. So that's my first defined name. The next one's going to be for the sales values. Again, I'm going to write it in the cell. We're going to start here. We don't need to move down any rows 
or across any column, so we'll leave those blank. The height, again, will be dependent on the count of values in this column. And we're allowing for growth, so we'll go down a bit further. Close parentheses on count. Width is one column wide, so I can just leave that blank. Press Enter, and you can see it's delivering the correct results. Again, I forgot to absolute reference, so F4 to do that. Copy the formula. Define a name. We'll call it chart values. And I'm going to paste in my formula. Click OK. Let's just check in the name manager that it's returning the correct range. And we can see it there. All right, so I don't need that anymore. Let's delete that. Now all I need to do is update my chart with these new names. So right click, select data. Here I want to edit the sales. And for the series values, I can delete the cell references. I need to keep the sheet name and the exclamation mark. Then I can press F3 to bring up the name list. And I want chart values. Click OK. Let's do the same for the axis labels. Delete the cell references. And then F3. And this is my chart axis. And click OK. So the chart looks exactly the same. That's perfect, it means it's working. But when we add new data, we should see the chart automatically update. And you can see there the new items included in the chart. I haven't had to manually go in and edit those ranges that the chart is referencing. Now there are two common mistakes people make with offset, and I get emails about these issues all the time, and they're super easy to spot when you know the cause. The first mistake is people use count or count A to return the size of a range, except they've got blanks scattered throughout their range. And when you have blanks, then obviously the count is going to return the wrong result. You can see the chart is now missing the axis labels. And if we go into the name manager and we look at the chart axis, you can see it's only returning up to here because the count is short by one cell, that empty cell. So it's important that whichever column you count, it's a column that won't have any blanks. The second mistake I see people make is entering data in a range that's being counted. For example, you might want to do some quick math in the column here, add in a total, and look what's happened to the chart. All of a sudden, it's got this new column in it. If we go to the name manager and check what's being returned, you can see it's including that new cell containing the total. So if your offset formula is returning the wrong range, the easiest way to check is to open the name manager and check the range being returned. If it's too short, then you've probably got blanks being counted. And if your range is too long, then you've probably got some erroneous data lingering below your table that's being included. One last word of warning is that offset is a volatile function, which in simple terms means it recalculates more often than most functions which are not volatile. The bottom line is that offset can potentially result in performance issues if you use it too much in a file. However, if you're using it to generate dynamic named ranges and the like, then it's not likely to cause you any problems. Just don't go entering it in an entire column of a table. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.